uh, down at fourth place is uh, Fnatic themselves. They are running a stand-in this time around. We're going to see actually Fly that is being stood in for a uh, by Cinderin himself. So that'll be pretty interesting seeing how they mesh there. They just got out of a practice game, so I'm sure there's plenty of different potential there. But without further ado, let's get on into the draft. Get Vikramon, my co-caster, in here. Actually, Vikramon, uh, in here, and uh, then we'll get it on going. So this has uh, been pretty interesting thus far, seeing what Fnatic has to bring to the table without Fly. It's a little bit uh, more dynamic, a little maybe unstable. It might be the word because it's difficult when you have somebody that drafts and uh, kind of ties the team together with that kind of mindset going on into it. And uh, then you see that you kind of have to uh, fend for yourself a little bit there. No tail right now in the drafter seat. Uh, we'll see exactly how that works out for him. But I'm excited to see what they can come up with uh, one way or another. I mean, they're still a very dynamic team, have a lot of really skilled players. And uh, it really, in the end, it works out that they still should be able to accomplish a lot right off the bat. Uh, banding out the Wisp seems the best move since Team Liquid does have first pick this time around. So that will be a great way to get them started. And uh, we'll see if I can actually get Vic in here in just a second. But uh, beyond that, we do see that we have the Dark Seer coming out as far as a ban. And another thing for Team Liquid to keep in mind is that Nature's Prophet. Trixie loves to run kind of a, a split push lineup with a lot of long range potential, a lot of global presence. And uh, they're actually going to go with the Nyx Assassin, leaving open the Keeper Light, but it does get banned out by, uh, by Fnatic. Therefore, Team Liquid has a number of different options, but they're going to start off with the Batrider. So, so I do have uh, Vikramond on in here. How's it going, man? Hey, Blaze. Not too bad. I'm a little sleep deprived. There's been so much Dota this weekend, and it's going to just keep going and going and going. Mm -hmm. Hard to keep up, but I mean, it, it, this seems like one of the cream of the crop type matches here, so definitely not something that want to miss out on. Lifesteal are going to be picked up right off the bat. How do you feel about that going into a Batrider? So Lifestealer is a very strong hero for Fnatic. I'm not ter terrifically surprised that they would pick it up, including early. Era, obviously, on that Lifestealer has contributed to it. It was just a huge amount of wins for them. Now, picking it into a Batrider, I think that it is right to point out that there's a difficulty there. Obviously, Lasso, quite strong against Lifestealer. But I think adding the Lone Druid on gives them a little bit of space just because, uh, you know, you can entangle the Batrider and hope to lock him down that way. Absolutely. But we do see the Lone Druid come out in conjunction with them. That's pretty interesting uh, with the fact that it's kind of a dual core lineup here. Uh, Fnatic does like to run this quite effectively. Trixie on the Lone Druid can be devastating here. And what they can do to make it actually really, really stable, uh, Trixie can play the Lone Druid off lane. That's not that big of a deal. He can survive in that way. But if they want to put pressure on a Team Liquid, um, make sure that they can't pick up a very late game oriented carry. Uh, they could actually just go for an aggressive tri lane, build into Lifestealer, going down in the bottom lane and putting pressure right out the the Lone Druid has his safe lane, he can go possibly into a 1v1, which he almost always uh, will win out on. And uh, from there, there's a lot of potential for them to move into an aggressive mid game, pushing down towers with the Lone Druid, and uh, maybe going for aggressive ganks with the Infest Lifestealer inside something like a Nature's Prophet. Yes, I think uh, aggressive Trilon is fairly likely. There is also the option, they, depending on who they end up drafting in the end, the Lone Druid can can also go up in the middle. The difficulty I see is, you see with the addition of this Magnus and uh, future picks that Team Liquid can come out with, they could also pick up Shadow Demon for IX Mike with this third pick. Uh, this is reminding me a little, and not in a good way for Fnatic, of one of the games that they played in the February Big Point Battle. So Liquid won, and they actually had the Gyrocopter there too. So Liquid won 2-1, and I really felt that they just outdrafted Fnatic there, and I, I see the seeds of that happening here because Gyro actually has a pretty good win rate against Lifestealer. Uh, in the last month, Lifestealer has only beaten Gyro 15 out of like 40 times, and then when you add that with lots of uh, magic immunity piercing disables like Magnus, like Batrider, and especially if they, if they add the Shadow Demon that IX Mike loves and loves and loves to play, mm -hmm. uh, Fnatic could have a lot of trouble getting this Lifestealer even in the aggressive trial end to get the farm he needs. Mm -hmm. One weakness to actually drafting like this, though, is, uh, as you mentioned, they could really use the Shadow Demon to supplement this lineup here, but they don't have any supports drafted up. It's very, very obvious that they're not going for a second carry here. They need to get some lane support mm -hmm. off. And uh, with that in mind, a Team Liquid is going to be susceptible to just being banned out of all the good lane supports. Banning out the Shadow Demon, possibly the Rubik. Or just a lot of different uh, options to ban, and Fnatic can just pretty much drop down any support that have already taken off the initial level. Now we're kind of dwindling into the single the tier support options, and so Jarcopter might have a threat the uh, But from there, uh, it'll be uh, 1v1 versus the Lone Druid. 
both the health cards who come out on top of that. Malone Drew does some effective magic stick charges, so I think that's an interesting thing is Team Liquid's banning out Looks like we do have an issue with Skype real quick. Uh, hopefully he'll get back on into it in just a second. But uh, as long I'm as back. we're not Sorry. dropping frames on the stream. Okay, go. <laughs> so, you, were, uh, uh, you were roboting really hard for me. But no uh, this is a delicate drafting point for Team Liquid, exactly. Because they don't want to take out too many supports that they may want to draft later. So I think with the Vengeful Spirit, A, uh, she has that mispositioning ability. She can counter a Batrider somewhat effectively until he sort of gets his BKB. And even then she can swap. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a smart ban, and they certainly don't want to ban supports out that they might want to draft later. I'm going to be really looking to see what Fnatic actually take up with their fourth pick, because if they if they don't ban the Shadow Demon, I think it'd be an extra, a pretty strong pickup for them. Shadow Demon Silencer Life Stealer, however, is a pretty weak uh, aggressive try. Like there's not a high possibility of actually getting kills there. Yeah. So this is interesting. I expect Fnatic's next ban to pretty much guarantee be a visage uh, just based on what they're kind of going up against right here with the slowing and damage potential of gyrocopter it just seems like no brain but also we mentioned the shadow demon now fanatic is down to those two just visage or shadow demon has to be banned out and i believe team liquid will immediately snatch up the one that remains so they don't have to worry about either of those here and uh, instead can go for maybe banning out uh, some of that long range initiation that they're kind of worried about here with the vengeful spirit rank two swap can be very powerful and pulling gyrocopter out of position kind of screwing him over uh, along with uh, the beastmaster roar doing kind of the same thing so they're really worried about uh, the gyrocopter getting picked off here, and they definitely want to make sure that they have control over their position. They're not just going to get long range uh, flanked up and ganked, and that's kind of why they've been out the bench, the BM, and the Stormstar. That's what's in common. A lot of mobility, a lot of range of initiation right. that they don't want to have to watch the BKB and play defensively the whole time. But with the Vistage Band, I'm expecting Shen. Definitely. I, I would definitely expect Liquid to pick up the Shadow Demon here. Now, uh, one issue that I see for Fnatic, they really... I mean, the fact that all these initiation tools has been taken out, especially the Beastmaster, who you know Hani loves playing up in that middle lane, as well as the Storm Spirit, it's going to be difficult for Fnatic to actually catch Liquid in a situation where they can pick a fight, even if Lone Druid and Lifestealer are feeling good about their farm and they're feeling good about actually being able to win a fight if it happens. If Liquid has just the rule of being able to initiate wherever and whenever they want, it's going to be difficult to make that silencer useful because he really does want uh, you know those big fights to happen so that his global silence is extremely useful and so he, uh, his last word does stuff as well. Um, they might pick up an Earthshaker, I think. We've recently <laughs> seen Fnatic run that quite a bit. Although, hmm, tough to say with the Chen now. Yeah, that makes it a little bit less feasible in my mindset. What they do have, uh, even though they don't have that kind of turtle potential, what they changed it over to a little bit is that push aggression. Mm -hmm. Now, there is still plenty of push coming out for the shockwaves of the Magnus, the flat cam chapter, but uh, with the Chen and the Lone Druid, they just have so much to work with that it might not be sufficient there. They still can put a lot of pressure on hand. Uh, maybe try to actually just go for a defensive try for the purpose of knocking down the tier 1 up top, maybe even putting pressure on the tier 2. From there, they can kind of pull the Team Liquid out of the uh, laning phase prematurely and kind of split them up where the supports have to start moving in other directions or they're going to take some permanent uh, damage and a lot of map control through the push potential of the Chen and Druid. Interesting. Interesting pickup here with the uh, Windrunner and the less track to follow through. So I think the... the yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll work out pretty nicely there because the open wound set up the split so very nicely. We're going to see no tail on the Chen to see how uh, micro skills are there. But uh, beyond <laughs> that, Windrunner, I'm wondering if it's going to be a lane support instead of TC Garo, but it is going to be TC Garo. No, so. Mm -hmm. Lane support Windrunner has been a thing recently. Uh, it's sort of had a resurgence. It's been a while since we've really seen her primarily support, but uh, it's a strong option, honestly. Uh, Shackle's going to be very good. It's a long, long disable, long range. Uh, you can get Lone Druid with his bear, which is just, it's always fantastic when you're able to do that. Uh, I like both teams, actually, but I, I am a little worried about just how this Fnatic lineup hangs together. I feel like they still lack a little in the way of initiation, and if they do run try versus try, I worry about that as well, because Shadow Demon Windrunner can lock you down for so long while Gyrocopter deals damage to you. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a pretty 
interesting here. As far as the landing situation, presumably we're going to see the Gyrocopter, the Shadow Demon, and the Windrunner all down on bottom lane here and are trying to get as much farm as possible into TC early on here. But as you said, uh, Windrunner is not as commonly seen in a full supportive role. She definitely has the potential, uh, but she's going to have to rely a lot on stacking and pulling to get some dedicated experience to move in towards better ranks of the Shackle Shot and Power Shot uh, to counter push against the Chen and also to get some powerful disables on heroes like the lone druid it's really easy to set up a bear to druid shackle and uh, maybe the thorn and honey side here it looks like he's going to abandon the bottom lane entirely look to start things off early with the uh jungle roll for that lone druid and he's actually a really fast clearer once he hits about level three level five uh starts speeding it up dramatically and we'll see how that plays on out but uh along with that bulba currently opting for down the safety of the jungle and without any wards or anything it seems to be just kind of that 3.510 passive setup where you have a three down in bottom one in the jungle and one in the mid lane and the only direct confrontation there is going to be that 1v1 in mid and that's uh that is that silencer against magnus or um, well, we do have Trixie on the silencer. It looks like they're actually switching things up, maybe going mm -hmm. down towards the bottom. Could be a 3 versus 3 down here. I wasn't entirely sure about it because right. the Lone Druid uh, was picking up so many defensive items here, but uh, all the same, they love to run Trixie as a solo safe lane, and uh, if he actually does it against right. Batrider specifically, extremely well. Bat doesn't have any great tools to go up against that last word, and uh, from there, there's a lot of pressure that can be put out. Um, but, I don't know, it's kind of back and forth here. It looks like what they want to do is run the lifesteal in the mid lane. Era is actually creeps blocking up in the mid. It could be kind of a dual mid, two, with, Lush. Dual mid with the mm -hmm. Lush Rack. So similar to kind of like the Chaos Knight Wisp or a Chaos Knight Lush Rack and uh, Lena are very, very powerful in a dual situation as well. So we'll see Korok here in the mid lane, but they're going to have to get some really, really quick pulls from Bulba if they're going to make this uh, work out to their effect rather than to Fanatics because obviously two heads better than one. They're going to control this lane pretty effectively against Korok here, trying to shut him down. And uh, they're going to go for the first blood right at the back. Skewer skilled immediately. The Split Earth will not come. Sinner takes a few hits from the tower, but in general, he's just trying to play as cautiously as possible. And yeah, he's kind of playing the off lane Magnus inside the mid lane role. He's just trying to play as <laughs> defensively as possible here. Right. I, I like these lineups from Fnatic a lot, actually. I was I was really worried that if they were going to run the Silencer as a support, Silencer just has such weaknesses in the support role that have sort of been revealed by a lot of teams just trying to run him and doing so unsuccessfully. I really think he needs to be one of your core heroes if you're going to make it work. And so I was a little concerned about how they were actually going to set up this draft, but I think the lanes that they've settled with are really good. They can put a lot of pressure on Magnus Middle by adding on Cinder and Slashrak here. And this is a good role for Cinder to play up in here. He is primarily a solo mid player, so I'm sure he still feels the calling to go mid even when he's on a support hero as a stand-in for another team. And so <laughs> that's good just to fit into his general Métier. Yeah, that works out pretty well. Interestingly enough, though, Hani, not settling for the standard uh, creep control positioning that puts it out in front of the tower. He actually pulls it all the way back past the tier 1, uh, actually towards the tier 2 here. He's taken yeah. a lot of hits. His bear actually dropped down to critical HP before falling back uh, to the fountain, but he seemed to be ready for this with all the tangos. TC is mm -hmm. diving a little bit aggressively, but uh, with only rank 1 flat cannon, I don't think he can close the distance and do the damage he needs to. So either way, Hani is finding some farming experience. The question is yeah. uh, how, much, how great of an effect that will be with TC putting I, out some harassment there, here and there. Right. I, I think this. I think that's actually a really good play from Honey. It's the sort of bulldog uh, position where you pull them up to between the tier ones and tier twos. The tri lane he's facing could very, very easily dive him, even if he was under tier one tower. So the farther back he can be, the the better. And so I think it's almost the ideal spot for him, given the tri lane that he's facing. Mm -hmm. Now we do see, despite the dual mid, that Korok is actually controlling runes. Uh, I kind of feel like Cinderin should be a little bit more on the ball with that, making sure that uh, the Korok can't refresh his bottle and therefore can't continuously sustain on the lane. Uh, do you feel that he should prioritize that or just trying to zone as much as possible? Uh, error or Cinderin, sorry. Uh, so Cinderin specifically. Oh, yeah, I definitely Aeros think Cinderin could, could do more rune control because they're still not likely to get a kill. Interesting that they've rotated. They actually going for it right here. They do go for the open wounds, trying to follow up the split earth. It will land. He doesn't scare just yet, but he has the invis rune. Um, does not pop that off just yet, uh, but he's probably going to have to shortly to bottle it at the very least. Yeah. And that's uh, they 30 have seconds of free. Top, by the way, to for the one versus one lane. Interesting. He's behind so two levels, though. Yeah, but along with that, they do have no tail in the jungle. Farm right away. He's going to move in towards an early mechanism and very, very quickly here. Also has the potential to smoke gank up with that Dark Troll Summoner. And uh, I'm curious to see if he's actually going to get some results out of it. Fluff on the offlane going up against Trixie here. And 
obviously not favorable, when, especially when Trixie hits mm -hmm. rank three last word, can just spam that out like crazy and dish out a lot of damage too. What would otherwise be a very survivable Windrunner? Yeah, I mean he's only level two. He, he sort of he supported bottom and then decided to come top. And again, this speaks to the strength of Fnatic's laning. This is a really non-traditional lane approach given their heroes, and I think it, it's really really good. One of the difficulties I saw for them with Fly being on the sidelines is not only is he you know their primary hard support player, but also without Fly their drafts have looked just a little bit more anemic than they usually do and so the fact that they managed to supplement their draft with really really clever lading i think shifts the balance back in favor of them where otherwise we might say that you know with the stand-in with less coherent drafting they might be at a disadvantage to liquid yeah, Hani doing the exact same thing. His bear keeps on dropping down towards 50 HP, but he's willing to take it. He's willing to wait the entire wave out, use a lot of HP regen, but he gets his boots and he's still moving in towards level 3. If he can just get to level 7 bear, he is golden. He just knows he has to commit a lot of resources to it to make sure it'll work out for him in the long good run. Good rune from Sind in the middle, by the way. He landed a very, very good split earth to stop Korok from taking it. Excellent. What rune would have that been? Illusion. Cool. So, I mean, so not, not the haste, most impactful. But yeah. but, yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, there is still going to be pressure. Era trying to put some damage into Korok here. He does only have rank 1 in Fee, so a high HP hero like that isn't going to take too much damage from those trades, but with Cinder at his back the entire time, he's willing to commit to those kinds of things. We do see down bottom TC and Ix Mike putting a lot of damage in this tower, and with that Bassy active and all these creep webs, they certainly got the kill on this one here. Kind of a mirror uh, result here with the Siege though, Creep yeah. up. Going up top, No Tail is going to be able to bring this one down as well. Going a little bit past the line of skirmish here to get, put some damage into Fluff. Not going to be enough, though running away 50 HP, but they get the tower in the end. Close. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Fluff's just having a tough time here. It's not that he's doing anything wrong, it's just that when you come to lane when Silencer's already on the cusp of third rank last word and you're level two, it's going to be really, really tough to not get harassed constantly out of that lane. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, Hani, honestly, only level four now as well, so it's not like he's that far ahead of the position that Fluff is at. Yeah, we do see Treads coming out for Era right off the bat. Again, this is one of his signature heroes, the Life Stealer here. And if you can just find some farm here and there, he doesn't have that much mobility without the phase boots. But as long as he can stay on targets through disables, but possibly entangle mm -hmm. procs or just a simple splitter with open wounds combo, he can dish out a ton of damage with these Treads. And I think that's what he's generally willing to accomplish here. Actually, going for the open wounds, but not as good, good communication. Cinder and a little bit mm -hmm. lagging behind, cancels out the split earth right when the uh, skewer comes on through. So yeah. making sure that they don't waste anything, he does actually use. Pretty big cooldown. Uh, obviously, having to wait 30 Welcome seconds for that to come top. back online. Oh, never mind, he's alright. Excuse by the skin of his teeth again. Uh, yeah, I mean, just a slight miscommunication there. I actually think maybe uh, we have seen Era go face boots before, and I'm not 100% sure about the treads pick because they really do lack uh, disables. I mean, they've got the Lashrak Split Earth. But, and maybe Chen creeps depending on what he's mm -hmm. packing. But other than that, you're just relying on Entangle. So could yeah. we see Era getting kited quite a bit and set up for traps like, you know, Magnus, Batrider more often because of his boots choice? I think the one thing that might be more of a factor is he knows he's going to get disabled. He knows he got mm. drafted into a team against a Batrider, Magnus, and a Shattered even. And the Treads does add a little bit of extra health buffer to be able That's to true. tank on through those big disables. So true. obviously a Dead Nakes is not going to be able to be contributing anything to an engagement. <laughs> so. Uh, that's true. Kind of trying to make sure that he has that potential one way or another. Right. And in the sort of old wow adage, a dead next is DPS is zero. Exactly, exactly. Chen does take down the tier 2 up top. He does commit the hand of god just to heal those creeps up to full, but in the end the deny cannot come out. Fluff just being harassed back over and over and over again, only finding level 4 despite being <laughs> on the receiving end of that kind of push. And So that means that there's just this huge gold advantage going the way of Fnatic right off the bat. We're going to see not only Ooh. air picking up some big items, but along with that silencer are going to move in towards some nice stuff as well. Trixie actually sitting right now at 2600 net worth, which isn't too shabby, uh, all things considered, and uh, can go in for some big, awesome things, maybe a 4 staff pretty early on. Sound the global sound is popping off, he cannot skewer, he cannot RP, there's too uh, much damage push, push, going up, and that is one dead Korok for the first blood. Great transition, no tail flanking on in, two destroy control summoners, and with the global mm. silence he just cannot mm. escape. Now they're going to go for the tier 1 in mid and there's nothing to stop them. Another massive gold swing in favor of Fnatic, and they're definitely taking the early game. We'll just have to see how it proceeds on through when they start going kind of 5 versus 5. Right now, uh, TC sitting at 46 last hits, with the phase boots, looking for maybe a drum or a magic wand to follow up, but he's in a pretty good position. If if the Magnus can land some RPs, the problem is Korok is not getting that Blink Dagger anytime soon. He did right. go up one versus two, and although he survived nicely to this point, it's not uh, all that he's looking for, and it's going to be a little bit more difficult.
Yeah, I mean, that first blood really all about no tail, and the timing there was just so impeccable. They clear out the tier 2 tower. There's no vision for Team Liquid on this side of the map at all, and no tail mm -hmm. just rotates very, very cleverly, comes up behind the Magnus, times his Dark Troll Warlord and snares really, really well, by the way. And as a result, I mean, Korok never had a chance, frankly, plus the mm -hmm. tower. And I mean, that that actually scores Fnatic a really good advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, the good news for Team Liquid is they're keeping this Lone Druid down very, very effectively. He's still only level 5, he just hit Entangle. Big smoke, though. Yeah, they have double damage on Era. The skeletons had to kind of head the other way towards the Observer Ward, uh, but the, everything else is kind of head down bottom. Look for TC. Does get the Open Woods, following that up too. They have the Ensnare to stop it off. They get the Split Earth instead. It does lock him down. They get the kill, and that's what they're looking for to finish off No Tail's mech very, very shortly. Uh, he actually has the Buckler Gold now and 900 away. That mechanism will be amazing for their team fights in the future. Mm -hmm. Such crisp play from Fnatic. Great rotations. They are dominating the vision game. I mean, where are Team Liquid's wards? Like, they're, they're really just not getting the vision that they need. TC had no idea that gank was incoming. And, I mean, if he knew, he would have gotten away easily. He almost got away as is just with this TP spell. They Are they going to rotate to Roche already? Wow. That is very, very quick, but they have the Dark Troll Summoners and a bunch of Skeletons available, and they can, every time the Skeletons die, they can resummon more, so that's a lot to work with here, and with the Vladimir's of Era, they can actually bring this down no trouble at all, and unless a gigantic RP cooldown comes on through, they do get the Power Shot, they get a little they bit know. of vision, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to see if they can follow up on it, but it's going to be Korok. so very belated, Korok wants to come in, <laughs> but... Bro's dropping down, 2,500 HP left. They're, it looks uh -oh. like they want to fall back. They're actually going to leave it. Yeah. Sitting at 2,300 HP, use it maybe as a bait. Uh, it's pretty uh -huh. much a game of chicken now. Who will go in the Roche pit first? The wards are getting taken down by Ike's Mike and Fluff, though, and from there, they're pretty much on even ground. Actually, no, full vision no goes channel, to by the way. Liquid. He, he popped it to heal And mid, control. Trixie getting picked off with this lame last pulling him down the cliff in a terrible spot right here, and with the damage coming out from TC, it's enough to bring him down. Really, really big pickoff if they're looking for finishing off this Roche very, very swiftly. Now, defending on the tier one mid uh, looking for more pickoffs is pretty much they're just trying to pull uh, one person out of position if they can accomplish that they will be easily able to take off a number of major objectives but all the while lone druid pushing down a bottom honey turning on that battle cry and just going to town on this tier one back towards Good roche room. Definitely a good good move by him. Do you think that if they had had Chenel, they would have... Oh, no, we're actually going to get them yeah. initiated. I'll call them. We'll come on through. TC trying to just pull things back. Fluff taking a lot of damage, but defensively disrupted. Now we're seeing a good lot disruption. of damage. Korok with that haste rune will be able to go for a big skewer. No. Global Silence comes across from Trixie trying to get something accomplished, but the Test mm -hmm. of Faith comes out. Era is out of here. No Tail going to be the only casualty long term. With all this slow, all this nuke, he will drop. Uh, but they did pull out the Life Stealer. Unfortunately, if they know anything about this Roche, they know that he's low and they're going to yeah. go for it here. This whole Roshan thing with Fnatic was kind of ill-fated. As a result, they, they lose Chen, they lose a lot of time, they lost Trixie. I, I really don't know about it, and they still don't have the Chen ultimate. These Dark Troll Warlords are going down. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he used it basically just to keep the Dark Trolls alive, which, I mean, they're a fantastic unit. They've got the Ensnare, they can give you that little raised dead army. Did you ever play uh, Dark Souls, Blaze? Yeah, I definitely have. So you know the level where there's all the tiny little skeleton babies? No, I honestly, I didn't play it that of. extensively. I tried it, and it just... Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, but, uh... Yeah, no, interesting setup either way. But uh, one thing, they banning the Roche, again, they, they over and over and over are kind of using it as a bait. They're like, okay, this guy's half HP, he's pretty easy to kill, just go ahead, take that Aegis, we're waiting. And they definitely are. Bubble coming out in, does get entangled though, yep. is locked down in this position. Era, not going to take the first strike of Caldon, maybe the second, but infests inside the bear instead. Now, Kogolo <laughs> seared up on the cliff in a terrible spot, and the, he makes his cut inside. They're all out of position now, three versus five. And uh, I'm curious to see how they actually proceed from here. Like, that bear wow. is... Call that it's recalled, break. but still, that is that is interesting. That flame break was huge. I mean, it completely changed the course of the fight. Marooning the poor spirit bear with a life stealer in tow on the high ground. That panda just like looking forlornly over the fight while Honey probably mashing his return bear key as quickly as he could possibly do it. Mm -hmm. No deaths, honestly. Uh, Blaze, what do you think, by the way, about this Vlad's rush on Era? Uh, I think it's great utility for the team as a whole. Remember, they're kind of running a tri-core lineup to an extent, with the Silencer doing so well right now, moving in towards drums. The Lone Druid will get some durability items in the long, long run, so they're going to get nice bonuses from the plus 5 armor to mitigate the flat cannon, and from there, as long as they can survive using the mechanism, using the Hand of God, uh, they will be able to take most fights after the RP goes down. I mean, of course, a 5-man RP and a huge amount of burst to follow up from uh, TC right during it is still going to steal their fate, but if they can just survive a little bit 
bit longer. That Vlad's really, really instrumental in that. I think that they mm -hmm. can still turn things around nicely. It's good against Roche, too, for that matter. That's the other big thing, because mm -hmm. they, it does seem like their strategy really relied upon a Roche around this time. But if, but Liquid got their you know map control together just in time to stop it. And so, exactly. so it seems like Fnatic really aren't sure what they want to do now that they weren't able to get Roche, because they're just sort of wandering around middle. They haven't really developed any more items on their team since Lundra d down that tier 1 tower, which was good. But you see, Liquid has really stepped up their warding game. Mm -hmm. They've got ex excellent vision of this entire area. They know exactly when Roche happens. And Fnatic's just going to try again. Mm -hmm. They still have that RP. They have not committed a single RP this whole time. Committed the regen rune. Now they pull in. The global silence does come out, so the flame lasso will uh, just be nullified. Bubble going to get locked down, but Korok looking for that ulti. Instead, falling back, skewering away. It means they have to walk away from this fight. Instead, the chase is, oh, they're just going to take Roche. They took a free Batrider. They took the lasso cooldown. Now they're taking the Agency Immortal, most likely giving it mm -hmm. to Lifestealer. And uh, no, they're kind of back and forth here. Korok What's needs Korok? to jump in, but <laughs> without skewer, it's so much more difficult. No blink, no skewer, 600 HP to work with. It's almost impossible to find this angle. But if anybody can do it, Korok can. He's looking for it. Uh, but instead, they're just playing back and forth, trying to pull them off of the Roche. In the end, they are actually all kind of falling away. The only one taking so much damage is that bear. The back and forth, Cinderin is invisible right here, trying to dish out some damage. The spirit oh. bear falls, will get resummoned, and uh, Century War comes down, almost catching out Cinderin. Wow. Very, very close Cinder, there. way, I mean, really, really bold play there. Again, I, I think Fnatic sort of knew that they weren't going to take that fight, and then Cinder is just sort of sitting there with his Invisor and almost cost them. That would be really, really bad to actually lose the little Shrek. But I was wondering earlier why Chen was using ults to just to keep Dark Troll Warlords alive, and we saw the reason why right there. Mm -hmm. Fnatic's plan to deal with Batrider initiations is actually impeccable. I mean, immediate ensnare from the Dark Troll Warlord, and then combined with the Entangle mm -hmm. from the Bear, means the Batrider moves zero units after actually landing his last Ice getting sent up with Fluff. Too much damage coming out. He's bursted down with a high roll on the Test of Faith. Really, really yeah, smooth move between Cinder and No Tail. They clean up one, and they pretty much have full control of the position from here. Without a tier one, Korok's going to have to go a long way to fall back. Bulba does have his lasso and his blink back available, <laughs> but like you said, it's difficult to get that off in the right position. Now the last word, pulling it back. He does get entangled up again. He's going to get locked down. <laughs> Ouch. Very, very unfortunate. Brutal. I mean, these entangles are just, A, the entangles are coming out. B, the, the silencer is doing really, really well. And I'm so glad that they ran silencer mid and not like, uh, sorry, silencer solo safe and not as a support. Because Trixie has the levels. He has rank four glaives. He has rank four last word. And that last word has been doing just a shocking amount of work. I mean, both Batrider and Magnus rely upon those sort of combos. Like, Magnus doesn't just want RP. He wants to skewer RP. And then he wants yeah. to, you know, hit his uh, shockwave on top of you. And last word means that just doesn't happen. And even even if it does happen, uh, global silence will ensure that they can't follow it up. Yeah, it's it's very very difficult situation to be in here. We do have the mechanism up from No Tail in about 12 seconds. Can set them up to take this rush, but again, the RP is always up. He wants it to be a big one in the middle of the pit, and so far hasn't found the opportunity. Global silence comes out. They have to do something here. Trixie going to take a lot of right clicks, but Korok going to drop first, and they actually just let Trixie walk away. They're on the run. Here comes Bulba, but he's in the middle of the enemy team. It's there comes out, and he's just going to have to walk away with nothing. Same thing with Fluff. They just engage and initiate as best they can, uh, but really, they don't have that follow-up every single time one gets picked off. They need all five heroes for this kind of a team fight, and instead, they're just trying to jump back and forth. Korok did buy back. He's back in the fray, but we're still at the stalemate. We're still waiting for this position uh, to try to resolve itself. Pawnee with a haste rune with the life still inside, looking for something big. He's kind of doing a weird sidestep thing, but beyond that, mm, uh, there goes Ike's Mike. Gonna drop down pretty quickly to a couple right clicks, and now we'll have to see if the follow-up uh, from... Uh, Korok is going to be sufficient here. He really has to close the distance, and it's not happening just yet. TC on the back end, not going to be able to get too much DPS, and Bahani is RP'd. Is it going to be enough? With the last with the flame break, he's still out of position. He's Bad still going to survive break. in the moment. Shockwave going to come momentarily. They're actually just going to go for the bear. No, they're going to change over to Cinder and bring him they down without any mana, no problem. Uh, and uh, that should be a pretty easy kill. Decent stun from Cinder, but it might not be enough. Actually, he is still alive, but he will yeah. go down to Bulba, I think. Maybe it's close. Not. It's extremely close. The napalm. Oh, the entangle again. <laughs> that bear. That bear. Oh, the shockwave oh. long range. Picks him off there. Korok is able to net that kill. Now looking at Trixie. He's trying to get in the action. Does get that last word off on Korok. Already down to two-thirds so HP. so much damage. Um, one thing to mention is Korok has been uh, not, uh, near a couple of kills here and there. Or Sorry, Trixie has been. Uh, the silencer has four glaive charges. But in general, there just hasn't been that many kills on the board. Despite how much aggression has been coming back and forth. Korok dropping low. No curse of the silent skills. So there's no way to follow it up, though. 
and uh, it's just Perfect. every single time they draw the line, they dish out some damage long range and fall back, and uh, e each and every single time I feel Fnatic takes better trades, they have better sustain mm -hmm. with the mechanism, but uh, Liquid is relentless, they keep TPing back on in, buying back if necessary, and yeah. although Fnatic leads for the moment, uh, 3,000 gold and uh, about 1,500 in experience, they need to get this Roche, you said it yourself, <laughs> this it hinges so much of finishing off mm -hmm. the Roche in, and I think they can manage it this time around. Yeah, they will, I mean, but this is like an almost monomaniacal focus on this Roche, how much could they have done other than this if they had just not, you know, peeled off on Roche, yeah, hardest Roche of life, says no tail. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what was that? Three separate team fights that all occurred in the environs of the Rush Pit. Fnatic really, really, really wanted that Aegis. So let's hope um, that it's worth it for them. Let's hope that they use it in an effective way. But frankly, they won most of those team fights, so it's not like they gambited that much. But it was, you know, one of the most dedicated attempts at Rush I've ever seen, I think. Like, just not giving up. Yeah, that would just not stop. They didn't want to concede it whatsoever, and uh, in the end, the RP did come out on the Lone Druid alone, and that kind mm -hmm. of opened a window of opportunity. Hani didn't even get picked off there, and uh, man, those spear barrier tangles all day long. Yeah, now we do see <laughs> uh, skill. Skill. Armlet actually up on Hani. He's going to put that on the bear, get some extra right-click damage from there. Uh, but uh, any other results that you see uh, out of that long-term stalemate, and kind of now that one team has finally breached on through, I do see Fluff was able to manage to pick up a mechanism. That that is pretty instrumental there, but uh, Gyroscopter still looking for that Shadow Blade, Shadow looking Blade, for yeah. a burst of damage, gank oriented type play, and we do see this smoke gank up top. The tier one gonna take a lot of damage, and that's probably all that they're gonna trade. be able to claim. It's, I think it's most likely going to be a wow early fortify there, but it is going to. There are two siege creeps, but it's gonna be a trade. Fnatic are gonna take the tier two bottom, and Liquid are gonna take the tier one top. I wouldn't expect either team to fully TP over to defend. I think Fnatic really want this tower. What, what they want to do with this Aegis is get at least both outer towers down. I'm not sure that they'll have time to Rax in the time of this Aegis, but I think for the next one is when they're going to seek to push in for the Rax. Because, I mean, Chen, he has that extreme pushing capacity, but you really want to use it early while the creeps are relatively strong to the field. And, I mean, Lone Druid obviously is just going to get bigger and bigger. So they're, they're going to seek to get these outer towers down. They're just going to put a little pressure on this tier 3 just to make sure somebody TPs over, but they're not actually going to commit to it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So every single time Batrider goes in for these lasso pickoffs, I think it's a really important aspect of the team fight. Mm -hmm. And uh, every single time it's been shut down very effectively by No Tail, getting those ensnares out over and over, and Tangle procs, lucking out from Hani. It just seems like yeah. Batrider is. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, throwing himself into an aggressive position, and although that generally would be exactly what he intends to do, the follow-up is generally there from Fnatic to make it so that he actually pays way more than the enemy team that he is initiating on. Uh, from there, it kind of pulls apart their team fight because they need the lasso. If they can pull somebody out of position, they force the enemy to clump up to retaliate, and from there, that's where Korok shines. But so far, they don't have that initiation. They're actually afraid now for to even jump in, even though Era's right in front of them. Now we do see on the back end, TC dropping a call down, uh, but it's not really going to be doing too much to deter them. The the Lone Druid still picks up the tower there. They hmm. go for the Global Silence. That was, I think, a misclick. Yeah. There's really not too much benefit from that. They, I don't think they were even planning on going in. Maybe it was just to prevent Batrider from Blink Lassoing Era. Because I don't think he can reach him now, actually. Yeah, it's hard to say. Maybe looking way. to turn it around the pandas in there. Never seen yeah. it. <laughs> First strike uh, angle. Yeah, the defensive disruption. Here comes action for Bulba, but he doesn't have enough mana for that lasso. Instead, just walks away. Era doing some big right clicks here. The bear on the front lines with that armlet just do dishing out so much damage, but uh, it seems to not really be changing the situation here. Again, they keep on going forward. They bat uh, batter down the hatches up against the opposition, but there really isn't too much accomplished long term. They have too much healing from Fluff. They the, the other the Fnatic has too much team healing from No-Tail, and from there, they're just really trying to force the enemy back and look for picks that just aren't happening. Yeah, I mean, Fnatic's individual play has been really... Uh, so, two things. Individual play and RNG. I mean, this Ogre Magi Spirit, spirit Bear over here, first hit and tangle, every time. Every time. I mean, that's that's actually honestly been huge in some of these engagements. Like, just there, the first hit and tangle on Batrider, forcing IX Mike to use the defensive disruption. Um, much earlier than he would have liked to, meant that Liquid had to peel off. And again and again, it's the combination of... No Tail has just been playing his ass off on this Chen, honestly. He's gotten such great entangles, used all the creep abilities, really well-timed Hand of Gods. He's gotten a few lucky uh, Test of Faith rolls as well. I can't remember who he got the kill on, but there was like a 300 or 400 point damage Test of Faith at one mm -hmm. point. Yeah, quick news, bringing down people very swiftly, I think it was maybe a Shadow Demon, but uh, one way yeah. or another, it's just insane how quickly they can look out and burst in those circumstances. The 
entangles the bear staying on point even with just phase boots and orb of venom to stay on target he's still finding the right clicks finding those lockdowns and uh, from there the liquid I think relies so much more on maneuverability they have the phase and the drums on gyrocopter the Magnus doesn't yet have his blink so close to it Korok only 50 gold away but for now just has been relying on his skewer to make things happen and if he gets uh, out of position if Batrider lassos but then cannot change uh, where the enemy is located then they're gonna get locked down too so all yeah. these different factors come into play and unfortunately that means and more and more tangles on board is spelling disaster for liquid in these fights blink will help a lot and he is done with it um, blink is absolutely crucial because if he blinks it's not going to proc last word it, he's getting last worded consistently in these fights and if he last words in skewers then you can't RP and if you RP, then you can't skewer and shockwave. Mm -hmm. So the blink will help a lot with that. Um, whether that is enough to win team fights, we'll see in five seconds. Yeah, just about. Arrow trying to go on in, close the distance with the open wounds, but the Shadow Blade does come out. They have a gem from Shadow Sight on the Life Stealer, trying to go in on TC again, but they don't have the ensnare just yet from the Troll Warlord. Looking for it. No Tail has to close the distance and not finding it just yet. They do fall back, realizing how extended they are. Korok is uh -oh. being focused by the bear, but it just jumps back, trying to get that tangle on both, but Good not silence. looking out this time. And uh, now going in, the big, big call done going across. Era, honestly, yeah. by himself entirely. Uh, confident in that Aegis and the Infest, and there's plenty of healing going on, but Era looks like he might just it's drop. Here. No, the Infest and the Hand of God. Cinderin being focused down by Bubba and Korok will be dropped in the end, uh, but at the cost of a lot of focus. Ike's Mike pops out the disruption, but he's dropping so quickly, and uh, uh, I believe the Spare Bear might be able to finish it. <laughs> One more right flake does drop it down. Era still in the action, trying to finish out Bulba, and it's not going to... It might do it. I mean, he has good movement speed Bear. going across the way. Just, just trust me on this. Oh, it doesn't. Wow. But uh, Fluff's probably going to live, too, actually. They're not going to get an entangle on him. But uh, some really great individual plays I want to highlight in the last fight. Uh, Cinderin could have been a much bigger participant in it, except for an absolutely fantastic low ground to high ground skewer from Korok. So Korok, even though he didn't get the RP, saving it up, uh, he only wants to use it if it's going to have that huge return. So he did a lot of good stuff without actually gambiting his RP. Uh, Trixie had a really well-timed silence when uh, Batrider was seeking to lasso. And, I mean, no tail. Again, every time Batrider comes in, he just cops a Dark Troll entangle. Like, how annoying must it be to be Bulba right now, just getting constantly, constantly webbed by those trolls? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he got uh, looked at a little bit in the last situation. No entangles came on through, and the ensnares seemed to be a little bit belated, but it's still one of those better counters to Batrider. A lot of the times when he was considered overpower with the, the highest strength gain that he had in a long period of time that later got mm -hmm. nerfed, uh, his biggest counter early on, uh, people just kind of knee-jerk picked Crystal Maiden because of that long-duration frostbite, right. locking him down even when he's fireflied, and yeah. uh, making sure that they can just dish out a ton of damage. This is kind of the same idea. It does rely mm -hmm. a little bit more on the RNG of the jungle, uh, so to speak. Uh, the spawns coming out with the troll warlords uh, pretty frequently. Ooh, we just see TC, TC coming in, doing a lot of damage here. They will get a double shockwave off, and No Tail should drop pretty quickly here with that skewer, with the right clicks, and Cinderin lassoed up as well, will be finished off in the end. So, yeah, nice kill for Jaro and for Batrider, and they need these kinds of picks. It's what they've been looking yeah. for all game long. And finally, now that Fnatic is spreading out a little bit here and there, playing a little bit of Rat Dota with Hani, split pushing down on bottom, and mm -hmm. they're finding opportunities here and there. Era now locked down the RP to follow nice the effort. Shackle, and they're going to be able to finish it off before the armlet can even come. Actually, I don't think he has an armlet, but no, he does. He does. And he, he does. did not get a chance to utilize it. So easy pick off there, going with the tier two. They just need to send one hero back to counter push down on the bottom against the Druid, and I think they can easily get a free exchange here. Yeah, I mean, where the main thing for those three pickoffs is where are the wards? Both teams have zero observer wards on the map, mm -hmm. and I mean, for for Liquid, eh, I mean, it'll help you spot ganks, but especially for if you're Fnatic, you need those wards so you know where these people are going. I mean, mm -hmm. Batrider and Magnus, they're going to cover a ton of ground if they know that one of your people is mispositioned. So it's absolutely critical to have that defensive vision, especially on the part of uh, your side of the map, to make sure that you're not going to lose that Chen Lashrac in a really tough situation. I mean, not having the Chen to send the Lifestealer back or heal him or mech him or whatever led to him dying there. But the other thing is, and this is something that Liquid are going to have to really, really worry about really, really soon, Fnatic are going Necro stack. They've got the Necro 1 on Silencer, very soon to upgrade into the Necro 2, and I think they might go Necro on Chen as well. Ags is also possible, but I I'm going to call saying it's probably a Necro. Yeah, that's uh, interesting, and uh, I'm not sure exactly how it'll play into their hands in the future, but uh, when you've got other different aura items and stuff like that, the Drums of Endurance and so on and so well, forth. Well, they're great for high ground. Yeah, definitely that, and 100%. And they're great against Gyro, like really good against Gyro. 
mm, pretty solid. Yeah, if you get the Necro 3 up especially, but that's a big, big cash investment that uh, mm -hmm. they have to really decide if it's well worth it here. They don't really have to worry about a pipe oh, of insight. Oh, I don't mean the true sight, sorry. Uh, just really quickly, what I mean is that he can't control where his damage goes with okay, the Okay, sure, cannon. sure. Yeah. So until he has BKB, and um, it, outside of his BKB, he's gonna just... He's gonna just die, like, straight up to the backlash damage. Yeah, so that could be a big deal with the return. Honestly, Lily Liquid has plenty of AoE for that to happen uh, pretty consistently in teamfights, and mm. if that is the case, then uh, TC, yeah, can be dropped down very, very swiftly. Now building towards hard HP, looking for a Manta style next, and uh, from there, he's running 1300 for the moment, but it doesn't get much better than that for him for quite a while. Like, the next 10 minutes, he's probably gonna be hovering around that value, and yeah, a quick burst of maybe 400 pure damage or something along those lines is gonna definitely limit him as far as how aggressive he can play. And that's, like you said, something completely out of his control. Mm -hmm. We do see up on the top lane that Hani is gonna put pressure out here and uh, try to bring down the tier 3 tower up top, but we've seen Liquid being pretty good about their transitions and making sure that they don't, that they draw the line at their high ground base. What do you think about Radiance for Lone Druid at this point? I, it seems kind of late to me, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, that is actually extremely awkward. I would prefer almost an Abyssal Blade on the main Druid himself. Uh, but yeah, if he goes for the Radiance, 28 minutes isn't Oh, he the could make Abyssal, you're right. Yeah, but I I don't know. I, I th honestly think Connie's looking for Abyssal, looking to play a yeah. little bit more. Or sorry, no, uh, for Radiance. He's looking for a little bit more split push potential, and uh, that bear can get uh, pretty beefy pretty quick. I don't know. It's it has a lot of potential, though, like, but like you said, it's kind of late. Uh, Twenty nine minutes is probably the l worst, the latest possible time that I would still say it's okay to get, uh, but it still is a big it's investment. It. <laughs> Either way, tier three down up down up on top. Same thing, looking for bottom, but they're kind of pushing oh, it wow. quite effectively here. Uh, uh, Cinder with the lightning build is able to force them back quite a bit. Getting some TPs. On in, but I don't know if they can close. Oh, Haster certainly can close the distance, and they can look nice. to. Oh, Global Silence Good will only silence. delay it. Can he get the TP? He will indeed he will. during that wow. Global Silence, and he just walks away. Wow, that was a br brilliant play from Trixie there, honestly. The ideal time for that Global Silence, just enough time for Hannah to get out. And I mean, actually, hmm, I wonder if an earlier Global Silence would actually have been better and leave the bear right on the racks, because maybe he could have gotten the melee racks there, actually, if they had done Possibly, that. but what they accomplished by forcing the enemy to TP back here is that they're able to go in for Roche really, really quickly. They don't have a Desolator, Liquid but they Nova. do have e oh, rank 1 eating, not that substantial. Either way, doing a lot of damage here, but here comes Korok looking for the action. The Necronomicon already dropping down. Boba pulling out Trixie does not get locked down this time. The Insider comes out on Mike. Uh -huh. Now they see the Roach falls. Aegis goes on to Lifestealer. Korok does not pop his RP just yet. Blinks on CD. Skewer is still up, and Ixmex is just going to go for the run. They've lost the Roach, and they're just willing to put fo focus into the bear right now, bringing it down really, really swiftly, but it ha can be resummoned. Hani looking to stay in the action here. Boba on the run. Run, gonna TP on out most likely. So in that fight, and I mean I know it's a one for one trade plus the uh it's not the over yet. Arrow jumping on in onto Korok with that entangle proc. He has to go for the RP. Ooh. No, he doesn't get the polarity off. Instead, just gets bursted by the lightning. Era still on the chase. Open wounds up in six seconds. Trying to close it down. Oh, and no. Hani on the front line of things definitely helps out with Ike's mic. And uh, from there, I think that'll be the, uh, the all the kills they'll acquire. Uh, there is a quick TP back from Bulba, but with Magnus disconnected and down in the yeah, grave for 30 seconds, they can put real, real damage into mid. And I'm sure they'll pause right before he respawns. Uh, right, yeah, fair enough. Um, so, in that fight, I mean, A, Korok, first hit entangle, come on, like, ridiculous. <laughs> this, has, this has to stop. But the other thing I wanted to point out, that Necro, uh, Gyrocopter has, has to kill off the Necro creeps when they come out of the Roche Pit. And so, Gyro begins the fight already at, like, 800 HP, and two hits from the bear, and he has to run away. So, Fnatic able to do basically area denial with these Necro creeps. And so, if you can't engage with the Gyrocopter, you know, who cares? Even if you do land the RP. Obviously, they didn't get an RP. Part of that's because of Entangle, uh, Lone Druid Entangle's OP as heck. But they did get the lasso. But, you know, if you lasso and you have no damage, who cares? Like, okay, you disabled the guy for four seconds. You RP'd, okay? But if you don't have the gyro to follow on. And that's all of their damage right now. I mean, Fluff has nothing. He did the long lane Windrunner. He has the mechanism, which is great. He's building towards Force Staff, which is also great. But, you know, no damage. And obviously, Batrider and Magnus, Magnus a little more so than Batrider, but they're not damage delivery vehicles. Fnatic mm -hmm. are really, and I think correctly, focusing on making sure the gyro is in one way or another neutered from the fight or has to run away. And then that frees them up to really not worry about the Liquid's massive army of crowd control.
Exactly, and uh, to inhibit that further, if they do end up actually picking up this Radiance here, uh, they won't have to nearly worry an, as much about the uh, range of initiation, blink the Blink Daggers, so on and so forth. Putting those on cooldown means Bat Rider won't be able to get the Pro Lassos off without committing that Force Staff. And once you're in that position with your Force Staff and Blink on cooldown, it's very difficult right. to get out of it. So uh, we'll see if they can manage here. We do see the Buyback actually coming out to try to defend this here, but the Fortification was already popped. They have to go now. They get a big Ooh, Shackle coming big out for shackle. Fluff, both getting skewered on in. RP. The RP is still available. They pop it off the melee rex does fall but they've already taken uh one they're looking for another era gonna duel it out and actually survive for a bit Fight just the immortal on the ground and left track did get sent back yeah wow no tail oh my god what a game for this guy yeah going on the last one era this could be the kill they get the force stab back as well and with the demonic purge he's locked in position korok does take a few hits but nice defensive disruption mike Good tc is gonna lay it into him and i think this should be it yeah they finish him off tries to go for a desperate desperation armor toggle but it just doesn't work yeah, however I mean. effectively they trade uh, a melee racks for two life stealers. So they did yeah. lose the less rack, and I think long term, it's not great now, but long term, it's going to be the exchange they needed. No, I think that's a great trade for Fnatic, honestly, Blaze, because okay, you lose the life stealer, but this is not hard carry life stealer anyway. This is armlet, mm -hmm. probably a drums, and blasts. Like, you're completely okay trading that, even with the Aegis for a Rax, because they just want to push these Raxes down. And as their Necros go up and up higher, I mean, that'll be great. The other thing is, uh, your point about the Radiance is exactly right, and I completely didn't realize that, and this is, of course, why these guys get the big bucks and we don't. It's <laughs> going to be so good to deny those Blink Daggers, because he's just been setting that Spirit Bear on top of Liquid right from the beginning of every fight. And so it's going to become... Mm, we sort of talked about how the Blinks make Last Word less effective. Well, Radiance is going to make the Blinks less effective, which makes Last Word really effective again. <laughs> Absolutely, because if you only if you don't have that kind of uh, jump that you can go for, actually we do see the Here fight breaking out pretty quickly. Bulba going in on Trixie. If this, they can pick this. If they can get it before the Global Silence comes out, they can make this huge with a Shackle. Oh. Fluff gets the Shackle. No Global Silence this fight at all. And they could just run rampant no in Fnatic's base right here. There is no buyback on Trixie. <laughs> TC getting tangled up. Nice defensive disruption. Pulling it off. Korok taking too much damage from Arrow though, and he will take a fall. Fluff's mech just a moment too late. Disengaging with that call down, but are they fast enough? No drum charges. Shadow Blade on cooldown, oh, and he's just no. gonna have to duel it out, and he will fall in the end. Oh, oh so painful, so <laughs> so painful. I can't watch it. Do you think the panda just has a higher entangle rate, and it's just a bug? Yeah, nice, and the cosmetics pay to win, you know it. But uh, yeah, man, it's pay to win. Well, there's there is a cosmetic that's pay to lose. The the juggernaut <laughs> ward that's like three times as big, making it a trillion oh. times easier to kill. Truth, truth. Uh, we do see once again uh, there is a DC on Korok. He doesn't have buyback this time, so he will be down for the full 26 seconds count. But that is ample time for them to put pressure and put damage into this tier three. And actually, Bulb is just asking if they want to go for it. I'm not sure wow. if there's. Uh, any, if there's just some delay in latency on his end of things, I hope is not. This but, on, uh, uh, is this on a Europe or on US East? Uh, currently on US East, so this shouldn't be that big of a deal for him. He wow. is getting back on in now. So, I mean, obviously, uh, we've heard Hani talk when he sort of co-cat with Toby and stuff about how, you know, Fnatic have found it very difficult to go up against these top US teams okay, on the US servers, but if they're mm -hmm. winning on US East, I mean, next game, if it's on Europe, might be even more dramatic. Yeah, I mean, it's not all about that, but that does factor on into it. We do see the bear shackled up taking a lot of hits, and uh, it won't drop, but it will be drop extremely low, actually, so with close. the Shadow Poison, it will fall. So, Hani has to buy uh, some resummon the bear 20 seconds from now, but uh, uh, it's just pretty much getting that cooldown rolling. Making sure that the bear is on CD means that the next bear kill will be dramatic, as well as picking up a small bounty uh, mm -hmm. for the kill. So, either way, it's a nice little pickoff to try to kind of yeah. declaw the lone druid here and we'll see how effective it is going to be, be but Hani in general has just so much farm uh, has the armor has the radiance can go for pretty much whatever item he wants now I mean here's the thing liquid are, are playing well I mean that bear kill I, not, I don't think either of us thought that it would be easy for them to get it but they did and I mean they, that was a great kill the Trixie kill preventing him from actually global silencing it at tier 3 mid that was fantastic. I mean, I, it was it was going to be really, really difficult for them to actually catch him before he could cast his Global Silence, and they did. So their execution is very good. It's just, this strategy has kind of hit them where it hurts from Fnatic, and if Fnat the Fnatic's end game is not even in sight yet. It's going to be this Necro stack. Uh, Chen moving towards his Necro 1. Uh, Silencer has Necro 2, and he's going to have Necro 3 and about 800 more gold. I mean, that's going to add even another element to Fnatic's sort of toolbox here. So definitely a really clever, inventive approach from Fnatic in this game. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, now TC finishing up his Helm of the Dominator. He doesn't want to look for a BKB here. He can just uh, Manta out of an Open Wounds and Ensnare, a Troll Warlord's Ensnare, uh, those kinds of things, uh, uh, making sure that he can stay mobile and active here. Uh, but I definitely think the Dominator is a good start, moving in the direction towards just raw right-click damage, because he can. If the more he life steals, the more he'll be able to stay alive. Nice armor buff, so on and so forth. So, in general, he doesn't want that BKB. It's not going to be worth it for the most part, uh, but he definitely wants to make sure that he can at least life steal and benefit from the fact that they only have like one spell that stops him from auto attacking. Other than mm. last word, which generally doesn't fall on him, uh, you're going to be looking at just the split earth. That's the only thing that can purely stop him from uh, going for yeah, uh, auto attacks. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, my only concern is that BKB does stop the necro damage though, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. So. I don't know. I mean, if they do get two or three Necro 3s and he still doesn't have BKB, that's just, he's just going to pop. But it's yeah. tough to justify, obviously, going a BKB just to, as an item counter about other people's items. Mm -hmm. I do like the Helm of the Dom. I mean, he has good damage. He's got the Shadow Blade. He's got the Manta Stallion phase. So, I mean, he's going to be able to do a lot of damage. And if he's able to lifesteal and stay in the fight, which he will be if they don't strongly disable him using their very, very few disabling tools at their disposal, then I think that might be what Liquid wants to actually turn around. Because again, they need, they have CC. What they need is damage. And they're, they're getting the CC, but they're not getting the damage. Mm -hmm. Now we do see Hani doing a little bit of a uh, goofy little split push with that Radiance, just running around in circles, the bear uh, putting the damage on into the towers, and from here, when you're down, a Rax up on the top lane, your tier 3 is gone on the mid, and now they're pushing down your bot with the Radiance, it kind of forces you into a position where you're always having to play extremely carefully, and actually TC doing the opposite of that, might get picked off here, the open wounds does come out, and he does Manta Good out Manta. of it, and gets forced out away, so, Great pops off stuff. a couple of cooldowns there, but they wanted to make sure that pickoff wasn't a reality, um, thank goodness, they. I mean, one thing, uh, going back to the draft a little bit, Fnatic doesn't have that great of initiation range. Yeah. They don't have a Storm, a Beastmaster, a Ventral Spirit, something that can pick up the Gyrocopter gyro outright. So that's not really that big of a risk here, but one thing that they have to worry about is the fact that the bear can just wail on the, yeah. the Rex real quick. <laughs> Their just... initiation is first hit and tangle, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And it is sure. good. Yeah, it works out pretty well. I mean, that bear is extremely quick with Rabid, and with Phase, you're looking at max movement speed. It is just such a darn quick thing, and uh, now moving in towards a, maybe even a Mjolnir? I don't know. It has the Hyperstone. It has, has without Phase, actually, which is just disgusting to me. It has 521 yeah. move speed without Phase boost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he's in range of the drum, then you're considering it max. It's awesome. So, that is insane, really. It really it adds up quickly and uh, makes it so that he can just stay on point wherever he needs to. Um, and that Mjolnir is going to come out pretty soon for that bear, too. That's that's huge, honestly. That's a big, big, big bear. And that's mm -hmm. He can do raxes, he can slice, he can dice, and he can first hit and tangle. Which, I hate to keep coming back to, but my Dude. god. <laughs> we do see Rose spawning in about two minutes here. Arrow actually waiting a little bit too patiently do for it. He's just gonna. Do they not time it? Kind of coming to the store a little early, waiting yeah. for uh, <laughs> the, them to start handing out free agents as wants to it's be like first Black in line. Friday. But unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> it's just not. It's not going to be open for a couple more hours. I mean, minutes. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do see the gem transferred over to No Tail. That is actually one vulnerability that I think Fnatic, or sorry, Liquid could exploit here. Mm. Getting No Tail mm. picked off really, really quickly shouldn't be too big of an issue. Hand yeah, of God no rank two and mechanism is okay, uh, but. If they can somehow disable Trixie and focus down Chen, I think uh, at least one of those two heroes can be dropped very, very swiftly. And uh, sure. from there, they lose a lot. Uh, they put the gem on the ground, they lose a lot of healing potential, or mm -hmm. they lose the global silence. Either way, that's the two targets that Liquid want to, uh, wants to focus on. The issue with that is that that means that the other heroes are running rampant. They have the mm -hmm. life stealer DPSing crazy onto Korok. They have the Lone Druid with his Radiance and all yeah. this other damage going across. Honey, as still appealing waiting as, yeah, as appealing as Chen is as a target, I think think they still have to do the bear first, um, it, including but not limited to probably popping Demonic Purge on the bear. They, they gotta get that bear down, or it's it, I mean, it's gonna shut down their blink daggers, it's gonna do a ton of damage, it can backdoor them, like if they're fighting on high ground, like while they actually do the team fight, the bear can just get their axes. So the, at this point, with uh, their tier 3 mid down, and their tier 4 mid, 3 mid uh, bottom soon to fall, they need to kill that bear, otherwise they're just going to lose Raxes constantly. And then and maybe after that, look at No-Tail. Which I agree, No-Tail's definitely the, the squishiest target at this point on, on this side. Necro 3 comes out for the Silencer, by the way, and I think we might have Lashrak build it as well. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Uh, so the Roche will be lining up in... Probably not. Yeah. 
Uh, we'll see Roche spawning up in about 10 seconds here, finally. They've been waiting for this the whole time. They've been yeah. putting a lot of time into just trying to make sure they get this Aegis so they can force high ground, but uh, using uh, eras up on the top lane very, very early on made it a little bit difficult for them to actually gauge when it would be uh, coming up available next. Now we do see Korok with the Ghost Scepter. Interesting play there, but just trying to avoid uh, that raw right-click damage from the Life Stealer. Now inside the bear, it's even more of a threat. It's more of an even greater initiation potential. Well, I mean, if they can the close the distance too, with yeah. this... Max movement speed bear, it's going to be difficult for them to uh, avoid this. So 522 MS, go for pursue. It's still closing the distance on Fluff. Luckily, they don't have the right clicks from it just yet. Demonic Purge does come out, but wasting that cooldown now allows Lifestealer to do exactly what he wants. They do bring it down to 700 well, HP, but yeah. Honey does have another resummon. I, I, I like the purge, honestly. They had to. They were afraid of it entangling and just starting a team fight right there. So they're they're gonna have to give up Roche. And by the way, Fnatic just. This is almost like it's not a pocket strat in terms of picks because these are fairly standard picks all around. But their like extreme dedication to getting every Roche on and making sure they only move out if they have Roche almost makes it like a pocket tactic. Like they knew that maybe Liquid would have difficulty actually contesting their Roche on, so they're just like always, always, always going for it. And on Lone Druid this time, by the way, uh, Lifestyle yeah. is gonna take the cheese. Sure. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with the uh, pickup of the Silencer. Yeah, Magnus and Darkhopter generally have... Okay, we do have an RP on the back end. Trixie and Arrow both caught out. They get the ultimate onto Trixie. Hand of God comes out. Mechanism not yet. He does get the Global Silence off, though. So the right clicks will come, finish him off. But they don't really have too much more to accomplish here. They got a single pick off. But I'm not sure if they can go for more. Nice hmm. disruption. A down onto Hani, trying to put damage into him. But for right now, he's just going to try to get a bunch of armor and uh, walk away. Era still going to do a lot of damage to Bulba. He is going to get four staff oh, away, but fair. still... Oh, another four staff again. He is going to get out of here. Aegis popped off on the Lone Druid. No tail taking a lot of hits. TC is just going to be on the run. And he might just get out. Could TP you away know, if he can jump in the trees. Yeah, the I think he will oh, be able to no, TP away. By the way, amazing shockwave from Korok. They almost didn't even get the Aegis... Uh, they didn't get the Aegis down until Korok had a really good shockwave from the low ground near the, the rune spot all the way across this tree line to hit Hani. So that was a fantastic Korok uh, shockwave there. Yeah, but in the end, the main thing that we're looking at here is without that reverse polarity, Era with Cheese is willing to just man mode on these racks. He can right click away, he has hmm. so much survivability here, and uh, already forcing out the Fortify and still getting 5 Majan in. Uh, pretty much free swipes going on through, and uh, now they have to worry a little bit more. The Napal or sorry, the Flaming Lasso is back up, uh, but beyond that, if they just w bide their time just a little bit, they'll have that Global Silence once more. 70 seconds on that, and then they can dish out a ton of damage themselves. They do still have the cheese too, which I mm -hmm. like. And uh, I did want to mention, you had talked about the Ghost Scepter on the Magnus. I think the Ghost Scepter is actually by far the best pickup he could get. Because he, in the first like four team fights, he almost didn't use RP at all, just because he would constantly get entangled or last worded or just it, sorry, he would usually get entangled or life stealer when he didn't want to use it. So that Ghost mm -hmm. Scepter means that when he wants to RP is when he's going to RP. He doesn't have to just use it as a response to getting entangled or something. So I like that. What I'm interested in is, are Fnatic just going to slow it down all the way to the next Roche? Because I, I think Aegis is part of their pushing plan, so I wonder if they won't just turtle, not turtle, but play passively until they get their next Aegis up. Because it I is still really dangerous to fight Liquid. Yeah, I mean, they have a 7,500 gold advantage, but that's being less and less relevant as the game goes along. Same thing with that 3,300 experience advantage. I mean, the levels are pretty clear-cut. A couple low-level supports, Fluff and Mike not doing so hot, but in general, unless they're going to be hitting level 16 on the Silencer pretty soon, it's not going to be that much of an advantage, especially mm -hmm. when you look at the level 18 Gyro moving in towards a, presumably a Divine Rapier. He's actually really, really close to something like that because uh, he does have life still, he has that's Manta Style, rapier. and he has a Sacred Relic, so there's really nothing to stop him here. It's unquestionably a rapier, and I, I like this, because Liquid know they're playing from behind. They know they somehow need a lot, like we said multiple times, they need damage. They need damage in these engagements. And so I, I think the rapier is the correct sort of high, high risk, high reward play, before they just you know, especially if they're going to be facing down two ranks of super creeps, two lanes of super creeps, and especially, especially, especially if they're going to be facing down mega creeps, that rape is going to be pretty necessary. Oh, Bulba in a bad spot. The Skulbasans does come out. Bulba forced that twice again. Really, really good about that, but isn't it enough. The bear is still on him. BKB comes out. They get the shackle on the bear. They don't want those entangles. They're uh -oh. going to get away with him. He can blink in just a no moment, but too much damage coming on tower. Again, the fortification has already popped.
up top. Oh, so God. put some hits into this bear will only delay the fall of this melee racks. And I do pull down nobody back. But anyways, uh, oh. TC taking some hits does get stunned up by the centaur. Uh, now will be able to finish off the bear and uh, try to walk away uh, with only the loss of the melee racks. It looks like Era is just going to disengage as well. Everybody else just TPing on out. Very, very coordinated and synergetic there. But either way, uh, the fall of the, of the bear will inevitably occur. There's oh. no way for him to get out of this. That's actually and uh, he did just resummon. Just resummoned, yeah. Yeah, that's 105 that's, seconds. Ooh, that's really bad for a fanatic actually losing that bear. Um, that's very, very, very consequential. But they do get another melee racks. Um, and I, I think a big part of that fight was Ix Mike was a hundred short of buying back, and he didn't pop demonic purge because purge would have been very, very, very useful. Um, either on the bear earlier or on you know life stealer or something. But as a consequence, they lose another melee racks. I mean, it's a tough situation that Liquid are in. I think rapier is the correct response, and he, he is going to finish it. And so, really, the question is going to become in the next couple engagements, will they be able to stop the Spirit Bear and Life Stealer before they just get Megas? Yeah, that's it, pretty think? much essentially it. Uh, the big deal here is it's a single carry versus a tri carry uh, to an extent. Uh, Fnatic doesn't have as much farm on the Life Stealer or the Silencer, but it's still a good chunk here and there. The Desolator focusing him down, if they can stay on target on TC, then they're going to have a lot of issues there. One Entangle mm -hmm. could spell disaster because uh, you can follow that up even after the Manta style with a good yeah. Penitence, uh, Ensnare, so many different things to lock him down. Right. Uh, but, of course, you're not really. There's a lot of chaos involved in those kinds of fights. When you're taking uh, 400 and some odd damage a hit, it looks like actually moving in towards 560 damage with that Divine Rapier now active. Uh, they can actually TL, dish out a ton. By the way, because uh, Lone Druid still doesn't have there for 25 full seconds. So it's really how the fight breaks down. The initiation, they're going in without the Lone Druid's bear active. Honey doing whatever split push he can, but he's really, all he has is Tranquils and Tranks. TP's rolling himself. <laughs> I mean, it's just completely, he has 99 damage himself. It's all yeah, about the bear. And right now they do take the melee Rax. So there is pressure. Actually, a couple of creeps kind of moving in, transitioning in towards the mid lane, but we do see initiation on from to do Trixie, or sorry, Cinderin, uh, from Boba's blink initiation. Uh-oh. They're, they're in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, Five back from Cinderin. Now we do see jumping on in, Arrow trying to get some hits in, but they both force staff down. Mm -hmm. So, so great in this position. I gotta say, Liquid have been forcing amazingly. Cinderin with that BKB, dishing out some damage on the front line, but can only take a few hits here. TC with the flat cannon coming up. Wow. They do get the big, big polarity from Korok, trying to bring this down main, immediately. They do finish off the bear as well as everybody else. Lifestealer, you know, Chen, Lifestealer. the bear falls. And without the spirit bear, I gotta say, this is almost good game. This if they could. I mean, Lifestealer is down, no buybacks. Ooh, TC still has down, Manta. No he can push down on this tower like crazy. They're gonna get this set of racks. There's there's nothing that can do in response to this, and so just a couple mistakes really, really, really flipping this game around. I don't know if they can GG it, but they definitely will get these two lanes of racks. So that ties up the rack situation. Mm -hmm. And still yeah. 40 seconds for Life Stealer. So are, do you think Liquid are gonna go for the throne, or they're gonna go for? Oh, there's a tier two top. I think so they're they going are, for tier they four. Can't go top. Yeah, I think they're going yeah. for tier 4 here, and the thing is, the bear is down for 60 seconds, Life Stealer down for 30, those are the big yeah. damage dealers for Fnatic, they can't do anything to stop this. This is an all-in, all-or-nothing, and I think TC might just pull it out here. There's so much damage, and what are the supports going to do? Cinderin wants to accomplish something here, but without the Spirit Bear, they have nothing to jump in first. Yeah, it looks I mean, like this will be it. it we knew that their margin of error was small, which is why they were playing so passive, getting all those Roshans. And just, in the end, it was a little too small. I mean, they lose the bear. That's really what happened there, is the bear was gone for 120 seconds, and Liquid correctly used that time to just push all the way in. The other decision that I, I, I really don't like, and I hate to... It's tough when you're a stand-in and it's not clear what the strategic direction of the team is, but I hate the BKB on Cinderin. He used it once, it did almost nothing, and he could have had two ranks of Necro in that time, which was much closer to what their plan was. I mean, they ended up with a Necro 3 and Necro 2. If mm -hmm. you had another Necro 2 onto that, and uh, Gyro blows up all three of the sets of Necro Creeps, you mm -hmm. have at least a shot of getting the carry down, and then once again, Liquid are stuck in the position of no damage. But instead, this sort of muddled, like, okay, I have a BKB, that he only ended up using all of once, I don't know about it. I don't think it's what made them lose, but it's something to look out for. Is When you are playing with a stand-in, you are playing with somebody who's not as familiar with your team dynamic as you are, it's tough to make sure that everybody's on the same page for really, really tightly plotted strategies mm -hmm. like the one they tried to use there. Yeah, this... 
That is definitely something to take away from that. I uh, especially agree with the the fact that the uh, Necronomicons is a great counteraction to the life steal or sorry the gyrocopter when he doesn't go for that BKB. So only having so much health to work with. If they had a little bit more focus, that could have worked out for them. But the problem was, I think they focused a bit too much with that polarity. I didn't see the positioning prior to Mag finding it, but Korok did get a three man RP or at least two man oh, and yeah. a bear, and that's that's what they had to get. That's really what they were looking for. And finding that out, the cheese didn't get used. The life so it didn't even pop off his armlet, I believe. Yeah. And from there, Desolator, it just, it, every single carry was very, very high value. But without the Spirit Bear available, when the Spirit Bear got picked off, it was essentially it. There wasn't anything that they could do to follow up with. And although I think Fnatic had good control over this game for almost the entire time period, picking mm. off a Rax here and a Rax there was not enough. They had to seal the deal some way. Uh, and unfortunately, they did not have the opportunity with this counter push coming through with a TC finding the Dominator plus the Divine Rapier, it just was too much yeah. for them. Props to Liquid, honestly. It, just tight, patient play, making sure that they, they waited for the exact right moment. They didn't get frustrated. They didn't just give up with the Batrider and Magnus. They just got the items they needed to get. And at the exact correct moment, they pull off the perfect RP. They get a great lasso, and they just take the game right then and there. All right, we're going to go on into game two of this best of three series to see if Fnatic can bring it back uh, one to one in this series or if it's just going to be a 2 0 shutout from Liquid. Either way, it should be an exciting match, hopefully, as exciting as this one. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is Blaze and Vikramon. Do you want to plug your stream real quick? Uh, sure. So, people can find me Twitch TV uh, slash Vikramon, V Y K R O M O N D. Uh, same on YouTube. All right, so we'll go on into it. Just a couple songs in between, and then we'll see what these guys have in store for us. Thanks for watching, guys.